you say you may have been spared to serve. And to do that as president of the United States, you have to defeat Kamala Harris on November 5th. First, what do you think of her as a person? What do you think of Kamala Harris as a person, just personally? Well, I don't know her. Uh -huh. I, you get to know people when you watch them on television or when you see them and read them and oh, but. Um, so you don't know her personally? She's a Marxist. Well, I can see by action. She's a uh, person that wanted to defund the police very strongly bailed out a lot of people in Minnesota from jails who did some really bad things. I saw that very loud and clear then when that took place. Uh, a lot of bad things. I mean, she's done a lot of bad things. There will be no fracking. There will be no drilling. She doesn't want to drill, which will mean our country is going to shrivel, shrivel up and die. You can't, you can't run the country without fossil fuel, at least not for quite a while because you don't have the you don't have the power. They don't have the power. You know, they have all sorts of nice contraptions, but they don't have wind is fine, but it, it kills the bird. It, the birds, it destroys the fields, destroys the fields, what it does. You know how economists and various, they, they go over it. Wind is the most expensive energy in the world, and the environmentalists love it. Why do they love it? It kills all the birds. Walk to the bottom of a windmill and take a look. It looks like a bird cemetery. But, um, you need the fossil fuel. She's totally against it. And, and you know, politicians, when they're against something early, that's what they're, that's where they're going to be. And if she got in, she would not allow fracking in Pennsylvania. She will not allow drilling all over the place. The only reason she's allowing it now is they were ending everything, and all of a sudden prices started to go up through the roof. And they say, go back to the Trump policy for a little while. But if she won this election, she'd go to things that won't work. The Green New Scam, I call it. And it'll be very bad. I, I, think, I think she'd be worse than Biden. Biden was the worst president in the history of our country. She's gone down as the worst vice president. I mean, she was known five weeks ago. She was known as a joke. She was known as a terrible vice president. Laughed at, scoffed at. They wanted him out, but they didn't want her. They would have done anything to get anybody on the list. You know, they had a list of 10 people. And they put her on the list, and she came in 11th. She was the last on the list, actually, in terms of uh, professionalism, in terms of everything else. Then all of a sudden, they realized that's not going to be politically acceptable. They didn't want to do it. They didn't have the guts to make that move. And they ended up with her. And then the fake news media, of course, got right behind her. And uh, at this moment, she can do no wrong. But if you follow politics and if you see what she said, she'll destroy this country with her tax increases and everything else. You don't have anything against her personally. No. You're just talking about her values and her belief. You don't know her. No, I don't. I don't know her. I don't know her. Uh, but these are things that she said then but is she saying different things now about fracking and that sort of thing? Because I, the things you're saying she said, I've heard her say those things in the past, but is she saying different things now? Well, uh, a lot of things, I would say 95, maybe almost 100% is totally different. She's like my policy. She's like energy and this, you know, we were energy independent four years ago. Today, it's a whole different story. But her, everything's changed. She's gone from no fracking under any circumstances. We're not talking a long time ago. We're talking about three years ago. Um, and we're talking about when she was running. She was, when she was running against Biden, and I guess they had close to 22 people. She was the first one to leave. She was out. She did very badly. That's why it's so crazy. She, she was last out of 22, and now she's the one that is running, and she's getting uh, she's getting a free press. Her speech, when you examine it, was very bad for our country. She's going to raise taxes tremendously. She's going to force companies out of our country. You know, these are great international companies. They don't have to be here. They can be in other countries. You know that better than anybody. And if uh, other countries, maybe in Europe or other places, are going to say, we're going to charge you 10% tax, and the U.S. is going to be at 54% when you add 
local and state taxes. I mean, they get paid for how much money they make. It's a simple business, very simple business. How much money is the company making? And if you're going to have to pay 54 percent here, uh, you're gone. You're going to move to another country. They have some very nice countries to live in. And they're very loyal to their shareholders. They almost have an obligation to do it. So she's going to chase a lot of companies out of our country with what she's talking about. You've been commander in chief. She's been commander in chief on the border. As commander in chief, how would you grade her paper on the border? Well, uh, I would say an F. I mean, in terms of badness, if you're going to look for how to run a border badly. It's, it's a market study in what you shouldn't be doing. It's the worst border in history. I believe we have 20 million people that came in, and you've heard this before. They come in from jails and prison. They've come in from mental institutions. If you know that, that's your, that's your world a little bit, isn't it? And they're terrorists. And they come in from, but they, they're allowing, other countries are allowing their jail population to pour into our country. They're bringing them here. And they're saying, if you come back, we will kill you. If you come back, we will give you the death penalty. And they're dropping murderers and drug dealers and human traffickers into our country by the hundreds of thousands. Who's doing that? The countries are doing it. What countries? Some are coming, but the countries are doing Venezuela? Uh, a lot of South American countries, probably all of them. Hey, you do it, so would I. If I'm the president of some country in South America, but anywhere in the world. It's happening now all over the world. Uh, they're coming from Africa, the Congo. Congo. We had uh, the Border Patrol yesterday. I was there. Border Patrol told me they have, as of this moment, 158 countries represented. Most people don't even know there are that many countries. 158 countries over the last year are represented crossing the border illegally. They're coming in from Mexico. They're coming in from all over the world. They're going through Mexico, and Mexico shouldn't be allowing it, but they are. They wouldn't have. They didn't allow it when I was there. I was very strong with it. We had a remain in Mexico policy. And if they didn't adhere to it, they paid a price. What are you going to do day one with these countries that have gotten into our country illegally, between ports of entry? What are you going to do to, with those people? We are going to have a mass deportation of criminals, immediately the criminals. Our Border Patrol, ICE, and local police know every one of them. They know their middle names. They know them like I know you, okay? They know them very well. They know the bad ones, and they know the ones that aren't so bad. But uh, the local police have to be given their authority back because our, we, we're in a crime-ridden nation now. We have, if you take the top 25 cities, interestingly, they're almost all run by Democrats, uh, cashless, bail. You have no, you don't have to put up any cash. You're a murderer and you get caught, and you leave. You don't have to put up cash. There's no bond, no nothing. It's crazy what's happening. It's almost as though they hate our country and they want it to fail. If these people are rounded up and deported, then this will be a massive process, because we're talking about a lot of people. And what they'll do is they'll pick out of the 100,000 people that will have to go quickly because they're, you know, murderers, prisoners from tough places. And these are tough people. These are not like babies. These make our criminals look like nice people, nice guys. But MS-13 gang members, they love cutting people. They love cutting up people, cutting people. They did it on Long Island. A lot of them on Long Island. I got, I got thousands of them taken out during my administration, thousands thousands of them, and they didn't come back. And the countries knew you send them back, no more money. You know, we give so much money so stupidly to everybody. I said, you do that. I said on Honduras, uh, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, Mexico to an extent. Mexico, bad, but it's a little bit different, a little bit different. But Mexico's bad in that they let them come in. They didn't let them come in. They were stopping them. I was. 
I was charging Mexico. I was doing things to Mexico that you wouldn't believe. I said, you stop them. And you have to stop them on your southern border, meaning on the other side, before they get into your country. Not after they make that trek. You have to stop them before they get in. And it was working. We had the best border in the history of our country. Biden could have gone to the beach. All he had to do is let them continue to work. And we had the best border we've ever had. That was the chart. That was the famous chart that I said I'm, I fell in love with. You know, I love that chart. I, was, uh, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that chart. But we had the best border at any time in recorded history. And now we have the worst border in the history of the world. 20 million people, but I think it's much more than that. 20 million, you know, they say, oh, it was only 15 million. Was it 15? It's over 20 million. And many of those people are vicious killers. And they're living in our country. They're coming in. And you know nothing good is going to happen. We have massive numbers of terrorists. We used to watch that so closely. We had one year where Border Patrol said uh, it was 2019. Border Patrol said, I had none, zero terrorists come into the country. Now, I don't even believe that. You know, it's almost impossible to well, do. Well, there's gotaways. You can't know who got away. Y you don't know. But, but they actually had it down as zero. Now we have thousands of terrorists in our country. And you know from a man of great common sense, I know you well, uh, you know that that's not going to end well. It's going to end really badly for our country. We have to get them out.